Hello, I'm Cleta Mitchell. Are you afraid of Cleta Mitchell? Cleta Mitchell, thank you. That was really interesting. The most important conservative in Washington. Cleta Mitchell, heavy hitter. Wouldn't you say Cleta? Well, maybe you should be. What we're seeing in North Carolina is that the proposed legislation puts roadblocks in the way of voters. The Republican Party depends on its legal apparatus to execute a strategy of disenfranchisement and election subversion. And Cleta Mitchell is at the heart of that. This is the story of a lawyer and a former state rep from Oklahoma who went from this. I always have and I always will put the people first. To this. I say to people, I'm the consigliere to the vast right wing conspiracy. Cleta began her career in politics as a Democratic state legislator later in Oklahoma. You know, I was a Democrat, but you know, I believe in redemption. She went on to become the go-to election attorney for Republican candidates and represented special interest groups like the National Rifle Association. A former senior NRA official recalled her as the fringe of the fringe. She's pro-unlimited corporate spending in politics. The Citizens United decision. I just think that this is a wonderful decision. She's anti-labor. But the labor union movement has evolved today into a single-minded force that is destroying work. And she's pro-election denialism. They call us election deniers. You know, we're not denying there is an election. We just deny that it was uh, conducted according to the rule of law. And she was on Trump's infamous Georgia call. All we have to do, Clay, is find 11,000 plus votes. After that phone call, she lost her position at a, a big national law firm, and she was kind of picked to head up this project, the Election Integrity Network. Leka Shupek is the state outreach director at Documented, an investigative watchdog group tracking people like Cleta Mitchell and their efforts to influence our election processes. Donald Trump had really created this upsetting disruptive energy by promoting all these election lines. that we won this election and we won it by a landslide. And the Election Integrity Network was really formed to sort of capture that grassroots energy and turn it to the kinds of purposes that they wanted, particularly by pushing voter suppression measures. You know, I didn't serve in the military and I feel like this is my military. I really do feel as though it's my patriotic duty. But the Election Integrity Network is just one part of a much larger web. The Election Integrity Network is the project of the Conservative Partnership Institute, which is, you know, a big policy shop think tank, everything you could think of for the MAGA Republican side of things. When you take a stand here, you have to know someone has your back. They support me when the pressure is on. Cleta is on the board of the Public Interest Legal Foundation. That's something that was pre-existing and was known to sue states to purge people from the voter rolls. She's also connected to the Bradley Foundation, which is a huge foundation with tons of money that they funnel towards conservative causes. So she has access to those kinds of resources. These are all different little entities that take on little pieces of this puzzle. And it's just really hard, honestly, often to know when it comes to the actual things that they're doing where one entity stops and the other begins because they are working in coordination so often. Cleta herself is meeting with the state legislators that are designing these voter suppression measures. Measures like the ones currently working through the state legislature in North Carolina. We're looking at substantial voter suppression from underinvestment and explicit attacks on on voters in the coming several elections. Ann Webb is the policy director for Common Cause North Carolina. The omnibus bill, which is Senate Bill 747, has more than 30 provisions, so I won't try to go through all of them. Cleta Mitchell and her Election Integrity Network have been publicly pushing many of these measures. In terms of the three or four most concerning provisions, the number one is there are numerous attacks in this bill on mail-in voting. That is a clear theme. We need to do something about massive, unsupervised, unprotected voting by mail. The proposal there would require all mail-in ballots to be received by election day, cutting what we've had as a three-day grace period for mail-in ballots to arrive at the County Board of Elections office and still be counted. We believe that all ballots should be received by the time the polls close on election day in order to be counted. Requiring an entirely new signature verification process here in North Carolina there is no meaningful verification of identity of people who vote by mail. On top of an already very onerous requirement that all mail-in ballots have either the signature of a notary or of two witnesses, 
And then the next category is a very substantial gutting of same day registration. Same day registration. Oh, that's right. Registration. All the things that we don't want. (laughs) The proposal at hand would make it incredibly onerous for someone to be able to cast a ballot that is counted as a traditional ballot when voting and registering on the same day. Despite meeting with North Carolina legislators. A meeting that I had with some Uh, North Carolina legislators back in May. Cleta Mitchell has publicly claimed that she had nothing to do with crafting the legislation. I don't see how you can say that she had nothing to do with it when there are these distinctive policies in there that are just really closely associated with her. And as someone who's been working in North Carolina, you know, democracy issues for a long time, um, not stuff that I'd really heard as policy proposals before. Look, I've known Cleta Mitchell for 20 years or so. She is all in with the far right wing of the Republican Party. She is MAGA through and through. And um, what that means is that she is part of a network of lawyers who want to make it harder to vote and easier to cheat. Mark Elias is an elections attorney, often found challenging measures like the ones Cleta supports in courts across the country. He's a bit of a boogeyman for Cleta. Mark Elias, Mark Elias, Mark Elias, and the Democrats are filing lawsuits. The most remarkable thing in a remarkable year uh, of statements about voting was when Cleta Mitchell was caught on tape complaining that students were voting. And we need to figure out how to do that and how to combat that. You were kind of waiting for her to make some argument that what the students were doing was fraudulent? No, no, no. Her complaint is just that students are able to vote. What is this young people uh, effort that they did? Her complaint was that colleges had put polling places on college campuses. They basically put the polling place next to the student dorm, so they just had to roll out of bed and go back to bed. We've been fighting in Montana and in Idaho and in Ohio now, and for a long time in New Hampshire, all because Republicans know they can't win if young voters and college voters in particular are able to vote. And so Cleta Mitchell is at the vanguard of a movement among Republican lawyers to use their law degrees rather than to protect democracy, to undermine democracy. But pressure campaigns on restrictive election legislation is just one way Cleta and the EIN are mobilizing their base. We're getting ready to launch a, a major effort nationwide to try to recruit as many people as possible to become poll workers and poll watchers. Another legislative push in North Carolina could embolden those poll observers. So House Bill 772 would completely revise the North Carolina statutes around poll observers. The folks at the NC election integrity team have claimed publicly that this is their bill that they wrote. The North Carolina election integrity team or NSITE works closely with Cleta's election integrity network. A couple of the pieces that are especially concerning are allowing the poll observers to move around, including within five feet of where voters are voting, explicitly allowing them to record audio of conversations between voters and election workers and to take photographs of election machines. Some of that is permitted already, but these additional, very expansive um, sort of rights of a poll observer go well beyond what is necessary in order for partisan observers to have sufficient perspective to make sure that the election is being carried out properly. We'll fight against the legislation as much as we can. It's a challenge um, because of the makeup of the legislature. Though Democratic Governor Roy Cooper has already come out against the legislation, the GOP currently has a veto-proof supermajority in the state legislature. Jennifer McMillan Rubin is president of the League of Women Voters of North Carolina. The group is urging voters to write their legislators to oppose the election restrictions. Clearly, the momentum is on the side of creating difficulty for voters. So we have to try to to build up uh, a force against that to make people aware and to make the legislators aware that they're going in the opposite direction of what people in the state want. They want to be able to vote and make voting easy. It's not just North Carolina, it's already happening in these other states. This is not the end, right? So, you know, whatever happens with these voter suppression bills, this network is not going away. They are going to continue to exist and they're going to continue to be disruptive to, you know, people's ability to access the vote.
who would have known years ago that we would have to work that hard to get people access to the polls. But that's really the key, and that's what we're working hard to do is try to get them there, make a difference. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you'd like to see more stories like this one, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel to get more More Perfect Union in your feed. And if you have any ideas for stories that you would like for us to investigate, just drop them in the comments below.